good evening everyone good evening everyone thank you for taking time out for the q3 and 91 fi20 conference call of ppap automotive limited we have with us today mr mr abhishek jain chief executive officer and managing director and mr anurag saxena chief financial officer we will begin the call with opening remarks by abhishek sir and then we will have the question and answer session i would just like to point out that certain statements in today's call may be forward looking and we have already put out a disclaimer to that effect at the end of the presentation so now i would like to hand over the conference call to abhishek sir over to you sir thank you gorov thank you janesh ladies and gentlemen a very good evening to all of you i am abhishek jain i welcome you all to the conference call to discuss our financial performance for the third quarter and the nine months of financial year 20 firstly we will start with a short overview of the industry followed by a brief about the company after that we would cover our financial performance along with this today we will touch upon some of the initiatives that we have taken in the past quarter to sustain our profitability as well as steps taken by us to de risk the company's operations from the current scenario ladies and gentlemen you are already aware the last quarter was again a challenging quarter for the overall auto as well as auto ancillary sector the quarter witnessed a 7.6% degrowth in the production of passenger vehicles compared to the previous year and 5.6% degrowth compared to the previous quarter the nine months production also witnessed a degrowth of 13.5% compared to the previous financial year the festival season has resulted in good sales growth for the industry in the quarter under review the sale of passenger vehicles recorded an upside of 26% compared to the previous quarter and almost stable sales compared to the previous year the quarter saw drastic reduction of inventory levels of passenger vehicles the inventory which had reached 65 to 70 days saw gradual decrease to 25 to 30 days levels going forward we expect recovery to take place in the industry due to the reduction of inventory levels and the launch of bs6 vehicles by the oems the confusion over bs4 transition to bs6 is some cleared with most of the oems now offering bs6 compliant vehicles however high gst registration charges as well as insurance charges continue to damper the sales of the vehicles we are hopeful that government will take prudent measures to ensure good growth in the automotive industry since this industry forms the backbone of the manufacturing gdp to which it contributes almost 45% the recent budget has reemphasized the focus on development of infrastructure which should also result in higher demand of vehicles now just a small recap of what uh, ppap is about so we manufacture polymer extrusion based automotive sealing systems interior and exterior injection molding products we have uh, seven facilities which are established strategically in the key automotive hubs in india we manufacture over 1000 different skus and we shift over 200000 parts every day to our customers which include the japanese as well as the other major oems in the passenger vehicle segment as well as commercial and two wheeler segment as well the company continues to focus on enhancing its per car contribution we have a joint venture for making rubber parts in the passenger vehicle segment kindly refer to the presentation which has already been shared with you more details can be found in that presentation in the current year we have started supplying 102 new parts to our customers we are supplying parts for models recently launched in the market like MG Hector, Tata Harrier, Renault Trevor, Nissan Kicks, Hyundai Creta, Maruti Espresso, Toyota Glanza among others. We have also started supplying parts for new Suzuki motorcycles Jixxer along with their scooters Bergman and Access. We have also added parts for Honda scooters. We are currently developing 169 parts for 15 new models. which will be productionized in the next 2 years we are also in talks with our customers for prospective parts for their new models for which 
development will start soon. To de-risk our sales, we have established a new commercial tool room vertical in the company. As you know, that we have been operating our tooling facility as a captive tool room. But this year, we have converted it as a commercial tooling facility where we will be manufacturing tools for our in-house purpose as well as for commercial sales purposes. Also, taking advantage of the problem of reduced sales in the last quarter, we have established two new wholly owned subsidies of the company. While one of the companies will focus on distribution of components and automotive accessories in the market, the other company will focus on development of electric vehicle components. For the distribution company, we will start designing and manufacturing of special products with our know-how and also explore the untapped accessories market. The focus here is to provide the customer with high quality products at a competitive price. For the electric vehicle component vertical, we will be focusing on products for the two-wheeler and the three-wheeler industry. Apart from development of the existing product range with these new customers, this vertical will also develop new products in the battery space. Now let's talk about the financial performance of the quarter ended 31st December 2019. In the quarter under review, revenue from operations on a standalone basis stand at rupees 79.14 crores compared to 85.29 crores, witnessing a degrowth of 7.2% on quarter on quarter basis. Our part sales for the quarter stands at 76.38 crores as against 80.51 crores in the previous quarter. The EBITDA margins for the quarter stood at 13.4% compared to 12.7% in the previous quarter and the overall 9 months margin are at 14.3%. The profit after tax for quarter 3 stood at 3.52 crores compared to 4.32 crores in the previous quarter. The PAT margin stood, stands at 4.5% and the EPS for the quarter stood at 2.52 rupees. Looking at the challenging times, the company started a drive in August 2019 called Every Pesa Counts. The purpose of this campaign was to identify the wastages in the company and make the company lean. In this campaign, our focus was to extensively look at our cash flow management, cost management, as well as reduction of break-even levels. All the heads of department were required to come up with areas where there may be possibility of becoming lean. Discussions were held with various CFTs and count many countermeasures were taken. Each key expense was critically reviewed, like production process, material cost, manpower cost, power and fuel generation expenses, repair and maintenance costs, logistic costs, etc. Sorry, the focus was to find the red behind the green. By doing this campaign, the company was able to maintain profitable operations in the quarter and improve the margin even though the sales were lower than the previous quarter. In difficult times, we remained fair to all the stakeholders of the company. We did not lay off any people. Everyone in the company shared the burden and contributed to improve the operations as one team. We are quite confident that with the strong cost awareness and mindset being developed during the troubled times, the company will bounce back to its financial performance as soon as the production of vehicles surges due to higher utilization of assets. Now just a recap of the nine months figures. For nine months in the current financial year, revenue from operations on a standalone basis stands at 256.48 crore rupees compared to 311.84 crore rupees witnessing a degrowth of 17.8%. Our part sales for the same nine months is 245.32 crores compared to 294.87 crores due to the slowdown and low production in the industry. For nine months, EBITDA was 36.71 crores. The company reported a standalone PAT of 13.61 crores for these nine months compared to 26 crores during 
26.36 crores during the same period last year. The PAT margin is 5.3% for these nine months compared to 8.5% for the nine months in last year. In spite of the challenging times, the company has paid an interim dividend of Rs. 1, which is 10% of the face value for H1 of financial year 20. The EPS for these nine months stood at 9.72 rupees as against 18.83 rupees for the corresponding period last year. I hope you now ha have got a sense of the activities which the company is taking and has taken to ensure future growth as well as to sustain profitability. Now I would like to hand over to the moderator for managing the clarifications that you may want to seek. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We take the first question from the line of Debraj Hemad Singha from Bajaj Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, it's actually Bajoria Financial, uh, but yeah, hi. Uh, I was just wanting to uh, understand how the auto market is placed, you know, in the next uh, six months. Like, what do you see? Because, uh, like, do you see the inventory still there, or do you see the inventory clearing out? Like, uh, do you think? Uh, Auto sales are going to, you know, for passenger vehicles especially, since they are our largest customers, would they start uh, picking up anytime soon? Uh, see, for what I've, I've been discussing with the customers, so most of the customers, they have a negligible inventory of BS4 vehicles in their, uh, in their, in their premises. So most of the customers now have only BS6 vehicles available. And at the dealer's end, there, there are still some BS4 vehicles being uh, available along with these BS6 vehicles. So inventory side, like the biggest concern what the industry had faced was, these, uh, was, this, was the dead inventory of BS4 post uh, 1st April 2020. So that concern might not be, might not be there now because everybody has taken countermeasures, and uh, most of these companies have started producing BS6 vehicles. Okay, and so what the overall the inventory so side you're talking about, inventories have already come down to 25 to 30 days, which is a standard uh, inventory size for the industry. Okay. So Can last six months, question. like, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I just uh, wanted to uh, ask them, uh, like, do you think that, uh, you, do you see, like, a trend of, like, you know, more orders coming in compared to, say, maybe the past two to three quarters where there's been a severe slowdown? Well, this quarter is uh, looking much better than what previous quarters have been. Okay. So, we are quite hopeful that this quarter is going to be much better than what we've, there is going to be a substantial amount of recovery in this quarter. Okay. Okay. That's it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Jamin Desai from ICCI Direct. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question, I wanted to get a sense on the pricing environment, uh, has it improved in Q3 compared to Q2? And what is the trend that you're seeing in Q4? I ask this because the production numbers from the OEM side were better uh, sequentially during Q3. Uh, Mr. Desai, actually production numbers were bad in Q3 compared to Q2. Their sales were, were better. Right, right. Sales were better, but production, because they had a lot of inventory piling up, piled up, 
So last quarter saw basically clearing of this inventory. And I, okay. I'm not sure I understood your pricing concern. What exactly do you uh, are you interested in asking? No, I uh, see uh, the sense that I was trying to understand was um, have the OEMs sort of uh, relaxed their uh, pricing uh, terms with you, or uh, does it continue to be slightly challenged still? No, it continues to be the same as okay. what uh, what it used to be. Okay. There is no change in pricing agreements or something between us and the customer. So we are already, like we've got uh, foreign exchange contracts with the customers wherein they compensate any foreign exchange in increase or decrease. So that is, those contracts are already in place. There's nothing changed for that. And uh, there's been no extra pressure on us just because the, the market is down that we have to supply our parts at a cheaper cost or something to the OEMs. All right. Uh, secondly, sir, I wanted to understand the uh, margin improvement that we've seen on a QOQ basis. Uh, how yes. much of that can be attributed to the cost initiatives that you spelled out, and uh, how much of that uh, was due to other factors? If you could uh, give a sense on in number terms. See, most of it was based on uh, on this initiative. For example, I'll I'll share with you some initiatives which we've taken, like. Uh, for uh, for energy cost, so like all seven plants, we've got a certain amount of connected load for which we are paying minimum fixed charges every month. Now okay. during this period, we reviewed all the connected load and we could reduce. Uh, we could uh, identify that in some plants we've got extra connected load, and we've gone ahead and reduced that connected load from the from the power companies, which will reduce our. Uh, fixed cost when it comes to power, energy. So that is like one initiative which we've taken. Then uh, logistics, like our number of uh, deliveries going to the customer was remained the same. But in every truck, the number of parts was, were reduced. Because timing-wise, it remained, remained the same, but quantity-wise, it was reduced. So earlier, we were sending like dedicated trucks from each plant to the customer. But now we are doing like a truck pooling between our plants and making sure that the truck is completely full load and then sending it to the customer. So this kind of system has also benefited uh, our bottom line. Then uh, we looked at maintenance cost like, like you know, we've got uh, same machine in different plants. So we maybe there was a need of keeping spares and inventories in all the plants. So we combined our uh, spare store and we are managing now inventories within one plant only for all the other plants. So that reduced our uh, our inventory in the spares, spare side. Then we looked at the AMC which we, are, we were giving for all the equipments that are there and we reviewed it whether we require that or not uh, require that. Then the maintenance schedule which we were doing for our machine, machines was basically on a time-based uh, schedule. That we shifted now from a time-based condition to a condition-based uh, system. So there are a lot of initiatives like this which were taken by, by the whole group which has yielded this uh, reduction of uh, costs. Great, uh, to hear, sir. Uh, and finally, uh, you spoke about uh, our ambition to increase our uh, kit value with the OEM customers. Uh, yes. Could you give us sense on what it would be at present and uh, how much do you say going to for this enterprise? See, currently our kit value for uh, Honda vehicles is the maximum where we do about uh, 6,000 rupees to 6,500 rupees per car. And when it comes to other OEMs, it varies substantially. Like with the, with, the, with Maruti, it used to be about uh, 1,100 rupees range. Now we are trying to make it up to 2,500 rupees or something by adding more injection molding products. Okay. 
market. So every customer, we are doing the same thing. So now our focus has been on increasing yeah, this sure. value so with Maruti. Sorry, your voice is breaking up. I couldn't understand uh, the question. Mr. Desai, your audio is breaking uh, up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, am I audible? Uh, sir, I'm sorry, we are unable to hear you. Requesting you to please uh, rejoin from a different number. Thank you. Uh, okay, fine, 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 I'll do that. From the line of Sunil Shah from Turtle Star Portfolio, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir, I have one question. You know, we are uh, catering to various different car models. Uh, we are. We are big time with Maruti and all these new companies as well, meaning NG Hector and all the new models. So can you get a sense on, you know, of the actual sales which are happening, how many different types of vehicles have our product? So what is our penetration level of the total market? Uh, can we get some indication? We will be also doing for Wagonar and Etigas and Sias or whatever. So I just want to get a sense of, so my thought is that when the cycle turns, uh, yes. how much we are already there uh, in, in terms of the marketplace? See, with Maruti, uh, when it comes to extrusion products, so we have almost, uh, in plastic extrusion, we have almost 85% market share. Mm -hmm. And we are present all across every model. Maybe, you know, one part we are not supplying or something like that, but we are present in uh, present all across uh, all models of Maruti. And right. same thing for Honda also. Whatever models are produced in Honda by Honda in India, we are present all across models. Same for Toyota, same for Nissan, uh, Renault also, whichever models are being developed in India now. So we are present uh, in all the models together. So, so to just uh, put it in that perspective, meaning if Maruti, Honda, and all these uh, guys, they have about 70% market share. Or uh, is it is it fair to assume that of the total sales which are happening, you'll be having about 80% market share in all the models which are there? Sorry, I, uh, can you repeat that, please? Okay. Of, let's say, let's say 2 lakh cars which are getting sold in the country from all the companies put together on a monthly basis, just hypothetically. Now, yes. in that maybe if for Maruti we are almost there for all the vehicles, likewise yes. for Honda we are there for all the vehicles, even Toyota. So yes. is it fair to say that of the two lakh, maybe about 160,000 or 80% uh, models would have our products across all companies put together? Uh, I would say 75%. Because uh, out of this, uh, I think 20% is basically Hyundai. Yeah. Okay. And Hyundai, we are present only in uh, one or two models only right now. Okay. So if you exclude uh, Hyundai and uh, like uh, Hyundai and Kia basically. Mm -hmm. So I think these two companies put together, they would be contributing almost 20% around right so barring that we are there everywhere okay how about yeah, the rest of it we are there yeah how about on the two-wheeler side two-wheeler side we've just uh, started venturing into it about uh, three or four years ago mm -hmm. so we are just present in i think uh, one or two models of honda and uh, one or two models of suzuki okay well, what's not product? present in hero at all Right. What's the product which is uh, give out on the two wheelers? We make these uh, injection products. Okay. Uh, so like uh, these cover uh, shields and all that. And what would be our content for two wheeler then? Kit value. Kit value, we're just starting it. So kit value, I think, would be not more than 300 rupees or something. So one more is on our ROE, uh, you know, it's really very, very low. So what action, meaning, you know, it's very low single digits. And even though we are doing a lot of things, a lot of new developments and all that, yes. over, the, over a period of time, how do you see that number improving or what are your thoughts on, you know, we see a two-digit kind of a number on ROE. 
how how will that work out and when by when see if you look at uh, the roe for the last year before this uh, slowdown started mm. i think we were doing a decent uh, uh, roce of about 16 and a half percent for financial year 2019 mm. and in the first quarter also our uh, roe uh, our roce was basically in uh, double digits it's only because of this lower utilization of assets that the return ratios have come down so as, so as soon as these these uh, market corrections take place i think we should be in a fair enough uh, decent position to have a good uh, roce in place uh, so is it safe to assume that the third quarter which went by Oh, yes. was probably one of the worst that we could see and going forward meaning good quarter you are you are your self mentioned it looks like that it is oh. certainly looking like that okay oh uh, thank sir uh, thank you very much all the best uh, let's hope so that you know the numbers turn around for you and the company as well thank you very much sir. thank you thank you next question is from the line of rajosa individual investor please go ahead <coughs> hello yes hello uh, sir my one question was that if our employee cost has reduced any specific reason for that is there any layoff which we have seen because why i'm asking this question because many auto ancillary have stopped for a shutdown kind of thing for some days like uh, so we have seen some kind of situation in our organization so uh, for our manpower cost we've looked at a uh, couple of things so first is uh, we've started like uh, in you know in good times you look at uh, only your uh, manufacturing manpower and you tend to tend to ignore the support manpower which is there mm-hmm. so during this uh, these during the last quarter we looked at uh, how many people are we actually using in support functions like uh, logistics like uh, quality like maintenance mm-hmm. and we, and then we were trying to uh, rationalize the quantity of them and as well as uh, quality of them okay that uh, whether the quantity okay. the quantity okay. is matching with our requirement and whether the mm-hmm. quality of people that we have whether that is matching or not so this is the first okay. exercise that we've started doing and uh, this has uh, thrown us thrown a lot of uh, a lot of gray areas which we are which we've started uh, attacking and the the other initiative that we took in this uh, in this quarter was that because of reduced sales uh, we basically uh, uh, were not working uh, four days in a month so in those four days uh, it was people were given basically uh, an unpaid uh, unpaid leave so in mm-hmm. in that uh, in in the last quarter whoever was earning uh, less than 25000 rupees we did not touch uh, touch those kind of employees but whoever was earning more than 25000 rupees their okay. salaries were reduced by about uh, 10 to 13 percent on an average. Oh, okay, okay. And on a consolidated basis, sir, we have been working on a joint venture. Kind of when we have significant losses on a joint joint venture, has posted a significant loss. So can we put some light on that? Like on a consolidated basis, we have seen some losses. Sorry, your voice is not clear. I could not understand the question. On a consolidated basis, sir, our joint venture has posted a significant loss. So just wanted to know reason behind that. That also is primarily because of the volumes going down. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, in that joint venture, we've got a very limited uh, number of models and number of very limited number of customers. So mm-hmm. primarily, it was because of the volumes going down, and the depreciation has increased a lot. So basically. cash profit was not a big problem there but overall we were we took a hit on the on the pbt 
And so what sort of client edition we are looking after this? Sorry? Hello? Is what kind of uh, uh, client edition we are looking? Mm -hmm. uh, PPAP? Yes, yes. So uh, we, like MG Motors, we've already started our association. Mm -hmm. We started with one product and now we we are, uh, we've got RFQs for other products for them as well. Hyundai is uh, one of the major OEMs that we are targeting now. So Hyundai and Kia, maybe we will, we don't have any direct leads from Kia, but through Hyundai we might get some opportunity to supply for uh, Kia models as well. And uh, Volkswagen we are attacking. Uh, Volkswagen is planning to launch an India specific model in the next two years. So we've already got business for that and we're developing those parts. Okay. Okay, so we're not uh, leaving any stone unturned for any new model which is being launched in the Indian market. Wow, that's good. That's good. Okay. Thank you, sir, for taking my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants. If you wish to ask a question, please press star then 1. Next question is from the line of Manan Shah from Money B. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, I just wanted to know, are we in talks with the Chinese OEMs who are planning to enter the Indian market? Uh, not right now. I mean, we are trying to contact them, but okay. there is nothing concrete as of now. Okay. And uh, we will be contacting them. I mean, they all are on our radar. And right. We will not, uh, we will not leave that opportunity to get associated with them. Okay. And uh, sir, I just wanted to understand. Uh, despite uh, being uh, having say 80, 85 percent market share for Maruti, why is our kit value not comparable with Honda? See, this 85 percent market share which I was talking about, this is for the plastic extrusion systems, right. which is the the main products of the company. Okay. And when you talk about kit value of the system, it basically has like three components. Plastic extrusion, this rubber extrusion, which we do from the joint venture, and then the injection molding products. Right. So injection molding products varies from customer to customer because in there, you know, like closeness, close proximity to the OEM plant is a very big factor. Okay. And uh, so with Maruti, we started this journey quite recently in 2014. Okay. When we established the plant in Pathredi. And that is when we have started getting uh, RFQs from them for injection molding products. Okay. So can we expect that? So to go up uh, from your onwards for the new models that we'll be launching? Yeah, we are very aggressively following up uh, on this new business. Okay. And uh, things should should get better. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants connected to this conference, if you wish to ask a question, Please press star then one on your touchstone telephone. A reminder to all participants connected to this conference if you wish to ask a question, please press star then one on your touchstone telephone. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference back to the management for closing remarks. Thank you, Janice, and thank you, Gaurav, from Concept, for organizing this conference call. I want to pay my sincere gratitude to all my analysts and investor friends who have taken time out of their busy schedule to listen to us today. We believe there are a lot of questions that, you, that have been left unanswered, and we would be more than happy if you can engage with Concept or us for any of your queries. We are very interested in showing you the kind of efforts that are being done to achieve these results. So I would really encourage you to please come and visit us 
in the NCR or in any other region in Chennai or in Gujarat to see what is actually being done by us. And so thank you so much for today.